Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dies, and today we're going to make an incline ice die heart. For this project, I'm going to start by centering the shirt using the sleeve inside the other sleeve technique. That is what centering a shirt is. So right now I'm using a washable marker and I'm marking out my center points. Then I'm going to tuck one sleeve inside the other sleeve and line everything up. So all the seams along the underarm, along the shoulder, if there's a side seam, I line those up too. And I just try to get everything as smooth as possible. When you see me take this shirt off camera, I'm standing next to my die table. I'm holding onto those marks that I made and I'm whipping the shirt. I'm really trying to like whip shake the, all the wrinkles and everything out to try to make it line up. That way when I get it back to my table, I can use my hand just to smooth it out. Now this is a Gildan's ladies tee and they're kind of wonky. They cinch in at the waist and they're a really nice shirt. I prefer to wear them, however, they're sort of misshapen because of that cinching in, so they're hard to get to lay smooth. It just takes a little extra time, but eventually you can do it. And then when you're going to do a project like this where you're trying to isolate out the front and put a design on the center and make sure that it's all lined up and straight, you really wanna make sure to take your time that you have the front of the shirt centered out perfectly. Or, well, like I say, there is no such thing as perfect, but as good as you can get it. So that looks pretty good. I have the front of the shirt isolated out. Everything towards the left of the screen is the back of the shirt and the sleeves. Now I made myself some stencils a long time ago, so I'm going to be putting the large heart on this particular shirt. So I'm just gonna trace it out by using a washable marker. Now I'm going to pleat along this line that I just drew on. And I tried by starting down at the bottom and when I got up around the top, I lost it. So. I think starting at the top where it's more difficult is easier. So you start at the hard part, go all the way around that, and then you finish off on a nice straight line, and it worked out really good. Now, you can do it any way that works best for you, but this is just working really good for me. And these pleats are tiny. I don't know how small they are, but they were as small as my fingers could hold them. For this heart, I'm going to be tying it off by using sinew. Sinew is a wax covered string that resists the dye. I want a nice white line in between my heart and the rest of the project, so I want that detail. Now you don't have to do this. You could use rubber bands. You could also use kite string. It really is just a matter of preference. But again, I want that white line. So I'm using my sinew puller and my matching caddy set that I get from boredomwithjen.com. I think right now she's having 20% off, and if you order before, I think it's December 2nd or December 3rd, you can get same day shipping and get your items before Christmas. So make sure that you check that out. Now with the sinew, I like to wrap it around three times and then I pull it tight. And then I like to wrap it around three more times and pull it even tighter. And you will see me continuously checking the back. I wanna make sure that the sinew is overlapping on top of itself. That's going to create that nice white line. Now, the wider the sinew line, the bigger your white line is going to be. So once I 
establish my sinew line. Then I like to go out on the parameters of each side of it and just widen it up. I like a nice bright white line. All right, now that the heart is tied off, let's work on the rest of the shirt. So can you see there where the front of the shirt is? There's a side seam. Everything that's on the right of that side seam is the front of the shirt. And everything that is on the left of that side seam is going to be the back and the sleeves of the shirt. I know that sounds like such a silly thing to say for those of you that have been dying for a long time, but if you're brand new to tie dyeing, at this point, things can look pretty overwhelming and confusing. You've got all this fabric to deal with, and now what? Honestly, I'm not even sure that I knew what was going on up until recently. Like, I just folded things up and threw some dye at it and sprayed and prayed, you know, and, and hoped that things would turn out, and they usually did, and I was happy about it. Now I'm trying to be a little more methodical and you know, think things through a little bit. So if I'm saying stuff that is totally redundant to you guys, it's because I'm also trying to teach people how to tie dye that have never done it before. So what I'm doing now is I'm working on pleats and I'm going to be securing it by using my tiny baby hair rubber bands. You could also use kite string at this point. It is just a matter of preference. But for those of you that follow along, you know that if I can use rubber bands, I'm going to because they're quick and they're easy. I secured everything that I already had pleated up with tiny baby hair rubber bands and I took a break. I needed to step away from this project and that's okay. Sometimes you just need to walk away and then come back with a clear mind. What I'm using right now is a pleating tool that I got from boredomwithgen.com and they work awesome. I'm able to stick it down in between the pleats and I can use it as a height guide as well. I want to say this one is, well, it's the large one and maybe it's like a half inch tall. It could be a little bit bigger. I've never measured it, but they work great. You see how I'm able to sandwich it down in between the pleats and it just sort of helps. I don't know. It just helps. So I do highly recommend these. Here's where it gets a little bit tricky because there's all this sleeve material. So like, what do you do with it? You can scrunch it. You can try to incorporate it into pleats. You can just do just about anything you want. And also for the whole back half of the shirt, if you wanted to, you could just do a simple scrunch. I just wanted to wrap it around and do the pleats. Kind of like what I did with the breast cancer awareness um, shirt. So just do the very best you can. See like that doesn't look that bad and I'm just going to secure it with various sizes of rubber bands. Sometimes I like to mark up my pattern with a washable marker and my yardstick, and I'm making my lines about every two inches. 
I don't necessarily always follow them. It's just sort of a basic guide. Now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the die. And for this particular heart, I want it to be a glowing heart. So I'm going to start by using yellow up in the center and then try to gradient down into my red. A long time ago, when I very first started my channel, one of the projects that I did was an apron, and I gave it to one of my dearest girlfriends, Debbie. I've known her since we were very young. She was one of my wild, fun friends. Anyways, I made this apron for her, and recently she said, well, why don't you do that again? And I thought, well, that's a really good idea. So I'm kind of replicating that apron that I made for her. and. If she wants it, it's for her mother. So we'll see if she picks it out. Anyways, so if you guys haven't seen that tutorial, I can't watch it. It's it's cringy to me. Like when I go back and I look at the first tutorials that I made, I had no idea what I was doing, which nobody does when they first start YouTube or sharing publicly or on social media or whatever. I mean, it takes a little bit to find your way, unless you have like a production team, which I definitely don't. Um, but yeah, <laughs> if you guys want to have a fun time and see the, the progression of things, go back and watch a few of the first beginning tutorials. I don't even sound like myself. Like, I don't even know who that person is. <laughs> Anyways, they're, they're fun to watch. I can't watch them. When they pop up on my TV, I'm just like, oh my gosh, turn that off quick. I don't want to hear it. So I'm using Wisteria on this project against my better judgment. I'm hoping that it's going to be a light contrast color. I know that it's going to get swallowed up, but I just want it in there desperately. So I'm adding a lot of dye. I mean, you can see how much I'm adding in comparison to the others. Some colors just aren't meant for ice dyeing and Wisteria is one of them. And I've been noticing that all of the dyes from Dharma that have kind of like a baby powder type texture have a tendency to just want to vanish or get swallowed up by the colors next to them. Now I'm going to create an ice moat out of all my foil. So you guys see me use foil a lot to cover projects. I don't throw it away. I set it off to the side and I save it up for this type of project. See, I'm creating a moat down there. That way when I add my ice, I don't have to fill it all the way up to the bottom of the gutter. Now I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. Even though the shirt has already been pre-soaked in soda ash, I just wanna make sure that I keep the pH of the shirt up around 10.5 to 11. Now I'm adding my dye while the project is still laying flat. I find that it does help keep from the dye rolling downhill. And I also like to start down at the bottom of the gutter and work my way up to the top. Now when I get up to the top, I'm going to be using um, the ice cube tray ice cubes because I want to have control of the heart. I don't want to knock a bunch of that yellow and red and orange down into the purple. And 
I also don't want to have so much ice up around there that it's just going to create a muddy mess because I don't want the purple to crawl up into the heart. I hope that makes sense. Now I have this entire project up on an incline. So down at the bottom, I have a, like a yogurt container or cottage cheese, whatever it was, because I want this to be on a slight incline. And then I have the top of the gutter up over the edge. And this bin has about a six inch sidewall. So it's a very, very slight incline. Then I'm going to set it aside and I'm going to let it batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours. And this project batched for the full 48 hours. It's so pretty to see all of that dye washing down the drain. Like I could just ASMR watch dye going down the drain like all day long. I do cringe a little bit though because I wish it was in the shirt instead of going down the drain, but it's okay. Purple has a tendency to do that. So now it's time for the washout process. So you want to start by rinsing your project with cold water. Cold water is going to remove any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. And then you want to increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon. And Kirilon is a professional textile detergent. Then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener. Then I will put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our incline ice dye after it's been washed and dried. And I think this shirt turned out beautiful. I had no intentions of making a sacred heart when I made this shirt, but I ended up having one. The heart looks like it's glowing on fire. And I absolutely love that about this shirt. That's why I put the sacred heart in the beginning of the tutorial. Um, just cause that's what this reminds me of. So all of that orange that is around the top of the heart, it didn't break through the sinew line. It crept up underneath the entire project and down the gutter. And I'm not mad at it. I think it actually looks really beautiful. So a lot of times we talk about, oh my gosh, going to create brown. What am I going to do? Let's not make brown. I mean, yeah, is there a little bit of brown in there? but I'm not mad at that. I think that actually looks really pretty and I think it looks like organic tie dye. You guys, I say this all the time. We've got to stop freaking out about creating a little bit of brown. It's tie dye. We just have to have fun with it. Now, the colors on the back are absolutely gorgeous. Where those green tones came from, I have absolutely no idea. Maybe some of that orange and red trickled down and made some green. Awesome. This is why I love to ice dye because you just don't really know what you're going to get. So the Imperial purple is the darkest of the purples. And then the lavender is this really that pretty pinky lavender color. And I'm wondering if the wisteria is what's helping create that green. Cause I'm not really sure where all the Navy blue is coming from. I think it's coming from the Imperial purple but maybe it's coming from the wisteria. I just, I really don't know. But overall, I think this shirt turned out great. It's a thousand times better than the apron that I made. <laughs> so what do you guys think of this shirt? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.